Hello and welcome. Wherever you're coming uh, to us from, I'm so glad you're with us today. Today we are going to look at nervous system case studies and we are going to talk about the kinds of things that you would ask a client who has the markers we're going to be looking at and the recommendations you would make. We will do a total of four case studies today as we work through this. So it's going to be a very, very fast paced webinar. I hope you've got everything you need to be able to take notes and, um, and stay with me. I'm really going to ask you to be with me. We're going to be together for about 90 minutes and it's, so it's going to be really fast. If you have one of these and who doesn't, please put it in airplane mode or silence it if you possibly can so that you can stay focused. If you've got instant messaging turned on, turn that off. Just really be with me so you don't miss anything. Our little disclaimer here, this information is meant for your education only. It's not meant to diagnose or prescribe and you are responsible for any results, good or bad, that result from using this information. You know, we don't use iridology to diagnose or prescribe. We've come a long way in the last 50 years with research and we know that we cannot use iridology to actually give a diagnosis, that is name a disease or prescribe, that is make a specific recommendation. Regardless of whether your background is nutrition or herbology or naturopathy or flower essences or aromatherapy, I know you're going to leave our session today with information that will help you, that you can use with your very next client. One thing I've learned over my many years in this industry is that excellent healers keep on learning. They know they don't know it all, and so I want to congratulate you for being in that small group of healers who wants to keep learning, to be able to give the best, the, the most recent, the strongest information to your clients. Just before we get going, I would like to get to know you a little bit better so that I can tweak this presentation on the fly. I'm gonna launch a little poll here and so I need to know what training do you already have in holistic health? If you would check off as many as apply to you, that would be wonderful. And hopefully you've got that poll on your screen now and just go ahead and check off everything that you've got under your belt already. And I'm inviting you to play all in with me. I promise you'll learn so much more if you dive right in. And when I ask for you to raise your hand or type something in or do a little poll, dive in there and do that. It'll keep you engaged. It'll keep you focused. And you will learn so much more than you will if you just kind of lay back and, you know, uh, sip your coffee or whatever and uh, are multitasking. You will get nothing if you multitask. All righty. Thank you so much to those of you who weighed in on this. We've got lots of holistic nutrition, a little bit of body work, and a little bit of not much yet, just starting out. That's great because that tells me what I need to do to make this valuable for you. Thank you for that. I invite you to follow me on YouTube. You can use that bit.ly link or you can search for Judith Cobb. I post things there very regularly, uh, once or twice a week anyways. Instagram, I'm a little more active on Instagram, often two or three times a week, and Facebook. I, with Facebook, if you're interested in iridology, what you wanna do is look for Iridology Education, the group, and ask to join that. That's my little iridology group, and we post, sometimes we post cases there, sometimes we just post general questions, sometimes there's just general discussion. It's a small group, but it's a growing group, and I'd love for you to join us there and kind of stay immersed with us and stay connected to us. As practitioners, those of you who are practicing, now if you actually are practicing, would you just raise your hand if you've got a practice, let me know who's actually got a practice already and that'll tell me who doesn't have a practice already. So whether you're practicing as a nutritionist, as a massage worker, um, or as a body worker, energy work, if you've got a practice going, let's have you raise your hand. A little bit, okay. So most of you are just, it looks like maybe you've got some training, but you're, 
uh, not but, and you're just starting out. So yay, welcome, that's exciting. I'd also like to know what iridology training you've got. So let's launch this little poll here just before we look at challenges you might be facing. Again, this helps me to tweak the presentation on the fly and let me know what I need to add in or pull out. Do you have any iridology training if you do any of these? None? Okay, half of you have none. Okay, yay. And the other half of you have what? We're a really small group, so I kind of know if you haven't weighed in on something. So can I just invite you to play with me in the sandbox here? So much more fun. All right. So most of you are brand new to this. Welcome. Oh, I'm so excited to have you with me. Okay, we're going to make this really good for you then. Thank you so much. And those of you who have some training, great. I will still make it good for you too, right? So if you are just starting out in your practice, you might not even be aware of these challenges. And if you don't yet have a practice, you don't even know these challenges are, are things that you're facing. So one of the challenges that we have when we are in practice, and especially when we're just starting out, is you, we don't know where to begin. So we're working with a client, they're we're getting their case history, and we have this big picture of all of these things that our training is telling us we need to be working on with them. And there's so many things that we don't know where to start. We don't know how to pick that beginning point, how to pick a middle point, how to pick an end point. And so we end up spending a lot of our own time, time when we're not with the client, but our very own personal time that we're not getting paid for doing research and creating protocols and plans for our clients. Now, I've polled a lot of people in this industry, and a lot of them tell me that especially when they're starting out and even years later, because they haven't figured out how to do this in a time aware way, they are spending two to four hours of their own time unpaid for every one hour of client time. Now, I want you to just take that step back. Some of you might think, oh, that's an outrageous price. But let's say you you want to charge $100 an hour for your face-to-face -face time with your clients. Now, if you take that $100 an hour and you think, oh, that's a fabulous wage. I'd love to maybe be making $100 an hour. But you're now spending three or four hours of your own time doing research, putting together protocols, organizing a program for them. You've just reduced yourself to working for five hours for $100. So $20 an hour, which may sound like a lot, but remember, you've got overhead that has to come out of that, that $100 that you've charged as well. Whether it's paying for your internet, your insurance, your upgrade hours, taking extra courses, whatever, it's got to come out of that money. So you don't make 20 bucks an hour. You maybe make eight or $10 an hour, which suddenly isn't so hot. It's not a living wage. The other thing, the other challenge that we are often faced with is this. And that is that because we spent all of these hours creating this marvelous program, we want to pour this out onto our clients all at once and give them the benefit of everything we've learned over the past years of training, only that doesn't serve anybody very well at all because it either overwhelms them so much that they believe they could never do it all, so they don't wanna come back, or they grab the one or two little pieces of information that they think they need and they still never need to come back. But they are, with that one or two pieces, they're only going to get so far in their wellness process, and then it's going to get stuck again. And so they really didn't benefit a whole lot from the information they got from you. So if those sound familiar, or if those sound like things you want to avoid, stay with me, because we've got some great information coming up. But you know, how would I know that those are the challenges that, that you run up against? Well, I've been there myself. I've been in this industry for almost 40 years. I know, a lifetime, right? Nearly 40 years. And when I started out, I was guilty as charged. I would book an hour. 
I would spend actually two or three hours face to face with that client. Then I would spend another hour or two writing this glorious report. And sometimes they wouldn't come back because I'd already fire hose them in one session. How many fire hosings can a person take? You know, we blast them full tilt with that water pressure that's way too high. But I've also interviewed a lot of other nutritionists and herbalists and holistic practitioners and almost all of them have been there too. Now, if that's where you're at or if that's where you don't want to be ever, stay with me because you know what, you're not alone. And there's a lot that I can teach you that will help you with this. I had no one to teach me this. This is what I have figured out on my own, all by myself over the last 40 or so years. So we have a question over here. Just let me look at it very quickly from Stephanie. She says, great point. I'm a receptionist in a natural health office, but all but one of the therapists I work with really struggle with this. I see so many clients not return and leave with the deer in the headlight looks on their face. Yeah. Thank you, Stephanie, for pointing that out. We don't want to do that. And so many holistic practitioners are so guilty of that. I don't know if it's that we feel that we are in competition with the medical world and we've got to look good, look like we know our stuff compared to them, or whether we just feel insecure, or maybe we just think we're getting good value for the dollar. But if the client doesn't come back, we've given no value at all. And they don't benefit. Nobody wins. You don't win because your appointment book isn't full. They don't win because they're not getting the ongoing care, supervision, and input that they need to continue progressing with their wellness program. So we need to really learn how to not do that. And you've signed up for an iridology webinar. We're getting there in just a moment. But iridology can help you with this when you do it right. And that's really important when you do it right. So who am I and what qualifies me to share this with you? Well, you've already hung out with me a little bit, whether it's on YouTube or Facebook or Instagram, you know a bit about me. I've been a health, holistic health coach since 1981. Like I said, nearly 40 years. Master herbalist, nutritional consulting practitioner, natural nutrition clinical practitioner. I certified for the first time as an iridologist in 93. Back when I started all of this, it was before the internet. There were not very many classes available, certainly not many where I live. Most of them were in California or Arizona. And, you know, that wasn't going to work for me because that was going to mean airline tickets, time away from children or taking a nursing baby with me, which I've done many a time. I may have been leaving my husband with a house full of kids. It just wasn't going to work. So as I started learning, I started teaching. And even in 93, when I became a certified iridologist for the first time, I started teaching what I knew. As the years went on, I upgraded that training, I changed as the research brought out new information, and in 2006, I decided to become legitimate. I became a comprehensive certified iridology instructor under the IPA umbrella. I um, have been teaching wellness professionals since 1985. Like I said, there weren't very many classes back then, certainly not very many locally, and it meant that as I learned things, a lot of my uh, clients wanted to learn what I was teaching and there was a real hunger for the information. So I started teaching and certainly I've been teaching ever since. I'm also the wife of one, the mom of seven and the grandma of seven. So over these years, I've learned a lot of what doesn't work. I've learned a lot of what does work. I've paid a lot of money for classes where what I really learned was how not to do something. I never considered a, a mistake or a waste of money as long as I learned something, even if it's what not to do, right? I've spent less money with mentors who could really teach me what I needed to know, and I'm ever grateful to them for their input and their ongoing support. So would it work for you today if I could share you 
with you not only some basic iridology as it relates to the nervous system, but also some ways to avoid some of the mistakes that I made, some of the lessons I had to learn the hard way. If that would work for you, let's have you raise your hand. Yeah, yeah, good, thank you, great. Really appreciate it when you weigh in on these things with me. It makes me, helps me know that you're still present and accounted for. So iridology can help you eliminate intake forms. Now, if you've been with me before, you know how I feel about lengthy intake forms. I think they're a proverbial waste of time. Uh, we ask, have these, we're taught in school to use these incredibly long intake forms that ask millions of questions, most of which are totally irrelevant. Sorry, my throat was just getting dried out. Totally irrelevant to each individual client. They're only specific to a few clients. So you've wasted a ton of time both in having your client fill that out and in you having to read an answer that has no value. I, I, you all do, however, need a waiver and a release form. Whenever we are doing anything in the holistic world, we need our clients to sign off that they know what our credentials are and what the scope of our practice is. That is so important. Iridology can help you to start creating a deep rapport from the moment you start the consultation instead of looking down at that awful intake form. You know, medical doctors have taken this art to a whole new level. <laughs> And I'm not saying all medical doctors are bad. I am not Dr. Bastian here at all. We've got a medical doctor that I quite like. He's quite open-minded. He uh, puts up with me requesting information and requesting certain exams and tests. And he's perfectly fine with me working with things holistically. So it's great. We have a really good report. But every time someone from my family needs to go in, like my daughter just broke a bone in her foot. And so we've been seeing him a little bit. He comes in carrying his laptop looking at the laptop, barely even looks up at us, sets the laptop down on the computer, has his back to the patient or his side to the patient, um, and is typing away, but he never looks at the patient. In fact, you know, we've been in there for the broken ankle three times now, and he hasn't even touched her ankle, <laughs> right? He's asked her, well, what did she know about it? Well, we'd been to emergency. The x-ray showed nothing. We'd since been to physio. He'd requisitioned uh, x-ray and ultrasound. We have those results. There's a break on the navicular bone, bone, blah, 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 blah. And he doesn't even look at it. I'm going, well, so what am I paying you for if you're only there to find out what we already know? And so there's no rapport there. Iridology can help you do a core assessment in less than five minutes and know the right questions to ask, prioritize what needs to be dealt with first, and create what I call your therapeutic priorities or your therapeutic sequences for future consultations. When you look in a set of eyes, you begin to see so much information. And when you couple that with what the client has said they want help with, it gives you total direction and total focus. And it will help you to outline, well, we want to start here, then we probably go here, then step three is probably this, step four is probably this, step five is probably this. And you can start breaking everything down into pieces. And as you break it down into pieces, you stop fire hosing your client because you can say, we're starting here. This is the homework we want to do. And when that homework is done and we're seeing the results we need to see, then we move to here. So we do this in pieces. Because we have looked at the eyes and we, we now understand how A leads to B leads to C, we understand what the genetic strengths and weaknesses are, we don't have to do unpaid homework time. Our protocol formation, our therapy priority sequence is designed right in the client session. And because we've done this, we don't overwhelm our clients anymore. We break the homework down into steps that they can achieve and they can be successful with. If we give them that two or three very specific, well-defined pieces of homework that are very doable, not something like alkalize your diet for Pete's sake, that is like six months of homework for most people, but we break it down instead to eat three servings of leafy green vegetables per day and a serving is this big. 
we've given them something very concrete. They can measure that. They can say, I my salads are this big and I'm doing it three times a day. Yes, I succeeded in doing that piece of homework. And because they are successful, they start to see results and they feel proud of what they've done. And they want to come tell you, I did it. Like 29 of the past 30 days, I did it. And we all like to talk about our successes, right? So your clients now want to tell you about the success because you help them be successful. You know, I've had a lot of students who have taken iridology with other schools and are certified there, and that's great. I'm fine with that. But they end up coming to my classes because they were not taught how to integrate what they know. And that's a big part of what I do. I teach you how to integrate your herbology or your nutrition, even aromatherapy, emotional work with the iridology. And so that helps us to make better progress with our with our clients as well. Here's what one of my students has said. This is Michelle Davies. She came to me already with four different certificates in iridology. Four. Dr. Pesic and Dr. Purse are no small names in the industry. Michelle had studied with them. This is what Michelle said. This is the most amazing iridology course I've taken. Woo. Judith's course is top on my list. She's very enthusiastic and excited as we are in the course. She has many good examples and stories to share that makes the course that much more real in today's world. Judith's iridology course is very informative, descriptive, and, and complete as it contains the most accurate iridology, including sclerology. Yes, we'll touch on that. And most importantly, how to put it all together and make a proper assessment. I feel most confident in my practice now. This was what Michelle wrote when she'd finished the coursework. She hadn't yet done her certification exam. And um, she was actually going to quit there. There's some things happened in her life and she was feeling overwhelmed and she actually was going to forfeit her certification pro protocols. We had a little chat. I said, no, you can't quit. You are so close. You've actually done the bulk of the home, the work. Just stay the course. Let's get it done. So she did. And this is what she said after she certified. Woohoo! Yes, so amazing to become certified. It was a great journey through Judith's class and extended webinar tutoring. Her, okay, you gotta know this about me. Any of you who don't know me yet, I am very emotionally attached to my club, to my students, and I really, really am invested in their success. Her faith and personal care really made the difference and encouraged me to the finish line. But it doesn't end here. I have encouraged or I have gained confidence in myself in promoting good health through nutrition and lifestyle and personal awareness for optimal health. So proud of what she did, did and that she stuck with it and graduated. And is now a certified iridologist on top of everything else she's got under her belt. Oh my goodness, it is so exciting. All right, so does this sound to be good to be true? I mean, with iridology, you let the eyes and the client guide you as to what questions to ask. You build rapport as you're doing this. You don't waste time on two or three or 20 page. Yes, some of you use 20 page intake forms and I know that because you've told me that. We don't do that anymore. We, um, we just work with that focus. So as we work on this, let's begin with Oops, an iridology assessment. Now, again, we're focusing on the nervous system as we do these. So this is what we do. This is a young man. He's 24 years of age. He's about 30 pounds overweight. He has a very high refined carbohydrate diet. He's Asian. And my experience with most Asians who come from Asia to North America is they retain the fast and easy from their Asian culture and they combine it with the quick and dirty and unhealthy from our culture. So this young man's diet was a lot of white rice and a lot of fast food. I know some of you are going, oh my goodness, that's a train wreck. Truly it is. And to this young man's credit, he doesn't drink alcohol at all, so that's great, but he drinks a lot of soda. He suffers with depression and insomnia. And he's been on antidepressants and on gout medications for about five years. So that's a long time. He's young to be suffering with gout like that, right? And so 
we needed to work. So as we looked at his eyes, his eyes are brown eyes. These are true hematogenic eyes. And so when we see hematogenic, we know that this suggests a predisposition to liver issues. Doesn't mean he has them, just that he's genetically predisposed to them. And so we, I asked him, are there any liver symptoms? Now, he didn't know this, but what I know is that in traditional Chinese medicine, the liver and depression are like this depression comes out of the liver in TCM. And so he didn't know of any liver issues, but I knew of one because he'd already told me he suffered with depression. And so a possible recommendation, and I just make a list of these in my client notes, is that I wanted to consider suggesting that he eat more leafy greens and that he eliminate the refined carbs. So for him, that would be first off pop, and then the white rice, and then the junk food. Can we do that all in one fell swoop? No, you try to do that in one fell swoop, they will run screaming. It is too much for most people to do. Then he has these wrinkles in his eyes, these rings that come around and around and around. These are called contraction furrows. And when we see those, we know that this person spends a lot of their time running in the sympathetic mode always waiting for the next shoe to drop, the next bomb to go off, the next bear to jump out from behind a bush to chase them. So my question was, how do you handle stress? What does your body do to you when you're under stress? Well, pretty obvious, right? When he's under stress, he gets more depressed. And when he's under stress, his body has gout. He has a gout flare. So some suggestions that I wrote in my notes, he hasn't seen these yet, are eat more leafy greens because that's going to help with the gout eliminate the refined carbs because that's going to take stress off the liver get b vitamins and he's got brown eyes so i really want to lean towards the methylated b vitamins vitamin c calcium and magnesium so those are some nutrients i want to be thinking about suggesting for him Next question was, how well do you sleep? What is your usual sleep pattern? Well, 24-year-old male, um, grad, he's a, a massage therapist, but he's having a hard time building his practice right now. So he has a lot of time where he's not busy. So he plays online games an awful lot. And that's messing up his sleep patterns because he's playing till way too late at night. He often doesn't sleep well through the night because his sleep patterns are so messed up, right? So, so if you see those kinds of things, what, what kind of recommendations would you make for sleep? What would you do with whatever training or background or even life experience you've got? What would you recommend for sleep knowing what you know about this fellow? So how do you type that into the questions box? Give you just a minute to do that. Ooh, Courtney, I love that one. That's one of my favorite ones too. Courtney says no screen time after 8 p.m. It's been some good research that shows that the screen time messes with how we do the serotonin melatonin conversion, and it can really mess us up. Excellent one, Courtney. Well done. Any other suggestions for sleep? Oh, good. Oh, we've got some coming in. Nice. No late night screen time. Excellent. Bees at night. Uh, sun exposure first thing in the AM. Those are great suggestions. Lovely. Tryptophan, not eating after 9 p.m. Excellent, Hector and Courtney, a regular bedtime as well. So good job, all of you, including Stephanie, for weighing in on that. Those are great suggestions. So here is what I shortlisted for him as well. And these are very much in line with what you've suggested. A daily walk in the sunshine. Where, where I live, we're north of the 49th parallel. So first thing in the morning in the winter time, the, the sunshine's not very bright here. Even in the, in the middle of winter, our sunshine is not very bright. So I will often adapt that one suggestion of 
sunshine first thing in the morning to get out for a walk at noon when the sun is brightest because in the winter our sun here is one tenth the strength that it is in the summer so we need the bright light so another take on that would be consider getting an sad lamp a seasonal affective disorder lamp that you could use first thing in the morning suggested a regular sleep and wake time just like you all suggested tryptophan yes or poultry in the evening that was also suggested and sleep hygiene with the screen time well done well done good 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 recommendations whoops so where we finally ended up with this this fellow again bite-sized pieces based on what we saw was we had him cut out the pop that was tough because he was drinking two liters or two quarts a day we had him cut that out and a little bit of, of agony with that but he finally did it and in, encouraged him to increase his veggies to three times per day which i hear from his wife he's doing really well with because we only picked on those two dietary things and we didn't take away his white rice yet he's done very very well i suggested that he walk or or ride a stationary bike for 15 minutes each day if he's walking to be outside doing that as much as he can if the gout is flaring the walking is not going to work the the stationary bike might set a strict go to bed time and a strict get out of bed time and stop the screen time two hours before bed it's like you've all read my notes i love it i didn't introduce any supplements to start with because he even has I, his wife tells me he has problems remembering to take his gout meds and his anti-anxiety meds he takes them very sporadically so i thought no we need to work with things that we know he'll do his results this was staggering within the first week he lost five pounds he couldn't believe it and he reduced his gout med he wasn't taking it consistently but he's taking it even less and he's also reducing his antidepressant meds for the first time ever. So he's, we're pretty excited about his progress. And it was simple recommendations that got him started. As we continue to work, we'll be able to build on that with him. Now, when you do iridology, oh, just before we do that, let's do a quick little quiz and see how close of attention you were paying. Now, this is tricky because I covered this kind of fast. Contraction furrows suggest an increased need for what? B vitamins and vitamin C, iron, zinc, calcium, and magnesium. Hopefully you're seeing that on your screen. Yes, there we go. And you can choose two answers. Two answers here. Yes, awesome. So far, so good. Oh, I love it when my, my students get it right the first time. That's awesome. Perfect. Oh my goodness, everyone who's voted has gotten 100%, so congratulations, that's exciting, well done. Okay, so when we do iridology, as you're looking at these, you're going, wow, those are really clear, really big pictures. How do you get images that high resolution? Well, you do that with a setup like this. Gotta tell you, this is only $5,000 worth of Canadian worth of equipment, so about 3,500 American. But you don't need this to start. If any of you dares to say, I can't do iridology because I can't afford a camera, it's not that way at all. You didn't learn that from me. This is where everybody starts. It's where I started. It's where we all start. And we all continue with this as well. You know, we need a good pen light that has a really white light. We need a magnifying device. And I like to suggest having a lighted magnifying device as well. So I actually keep these in a little pouch. And if you've got just a magnifier like this, you can buy these on Amazon. It has interchangeable lenses that I believe it's like a 3X, a 5X, and a 10X or something like that. I put the one in that I like, and I think it's a 10X. And so I can use this as just a magnifying glass, or I can use it with the light. Or if I want, I can put it together with my little pen light. Now, the reason that I want that is with this one, I have no control over where that light falls in my field of vision. And sometimes I want to move the light, but hold my magnifier steady so I can actually cast shadows in the eye. It makes different features that we're looking at pop. So I will take photos of every client, absolutely. 
Not when I first started this though, but I will always use this in every appointment. Right, and it's and I will also when I've got photos of the client's eyes, I will bring those up on my computer screen. This isn't to look for changes. This is to remind me of what I saw and what we were working on and to see if I notice any markings that I didn't notice before as we continue working together. Okay, so that's really important. So for seriously under $50 US easily, you can have the kind of equipment that you need to begin doing iridology well. Okay, so for 50 bucks, most of us can afford that. If you can only afford one piece, get the lighted magnifier and add the pen light for $2.99 later on, right? So do what you can. At any rate, let's look at another case study. So that's where we need to start. And just before that, we want to make sure that that information really hit home with you. What kind of equipment do you need to start doing iridology? A microscope, a telescope, a periscope, or a magnifying device and a pen light. Yeah, so far so good. About half of you have voted well done. Yeah, okay. So excited, yes. So now you've really got it. You don't need a fancy camera to do iridology. This is a female that we're looking at, age 58. She's at a good weight. She weighs about 130 pounds and she's 5'5", so that's pretty good. She's got a very active lifestyle, which is one of the reasons that I'm not too worried about her weighing 130. If she was a couch potato, we might have a slightly different conversation. She has a history of depression that is controlled with diet and exercise. She does not drink coffee, tea, or alcohol, but she also has restless leg syndrome. So you'll see that I've highlighted in red the different things that would link into our discussion of the nervous system today. Now, the interesting thing with the restless leg syndrome is that she tried antidepressants about 15 years ago and she did the antidepressants for about 10 weeks. Restless leg syndrome is often a side effect of antidepressants. Now, the sad thing is when she got herself off those antidepressants because as she describes it, it was the best mistake she could have ever made in her lifetime because it made her hunker down and decide there were other answers that were better. And as she did that, she got off the antidepressants, but the imbalances that they created in her brain have lingered. And she continues to have issues with restless leg syndrome to this day. Here we go, and a little bit about her. Again, she's got these dirty or these uh, dirty orange and brown spots in her eyes, and these make us want to ask questions about her liver. Now, remember, the liver is responsible not only for detoxifying everything in her body that needs detoxifying; it's also responsible for processing fats and oils and creating cholesterol. Cholesterol is not a dirty word. It is the foundation for all critical brain and nerve function. Without cholesterol, your brain and your nerves do not work properly. This client also has something called Gilbert's syndrome. Now, Gilbert's syndrome is interesting. It affects about 10% of the population. It's a benign situation, but it's where the liver does not have the ability, it's lacking an enzyme to conjugate bilirubin properly, so this client is almost always slightly jaundiced. Are there any questions that you would ask a client who you knew had pre-existing liver issues? If you've got a, if you've got a question that you would ask her, would you just raise your hand so that I know that you're typing an answer in for us? Yeah, okay, Larissa, thank you. We'll wait for your answer to come in. Thank you for that. Now, remember what we said before, that the liver is strongly tied to depression. All right? And so that is a key thing to keep in mind when we're working with someone who has these brown spots in the eyes. 
if they are prone to depression, it's going to tie back to the liver for her. And we're just waiting for Larissa's comment to come in. Now, those of you who are waiting for her, ooh, good, we've got a couple of comments. Wonderful, love this. How do you feel after eating certain foods? Yeah, yeah, and Larissa, are there any foods that you would expect would be more problematic here? Ah, Hector, you beat her to the punch, good job. You said, how do you feel after eating fatty meals? So we're looking for bile production, which affects how we digest our fats. Great questions, exactly and right on. So depending on her answers, what recommendations would you want to make? Just what are some general liver recommendations that you like to make or would consider making? I'll give you just a second to weigh in on that before I share with you my favorite easy recommendations. Another piece of information. While this client has a bit of a sweet tooth, she often does a good job with keeping it in check, but she's been known to indulge in cheesecake a couple of times a week, usually homemade, made with xylitol, um, often with an almond flour crust instead of a graham crust. So she's really trying to get the sweets out but she's really, um, she's prone to those kinds of things a little bit. So some suggestions here are, Hector suggests drinking more water and Stephanie says eat more veggies and beets. Good one. Larissa says more bitter foods. Oh, great suggestions. So my short list for this client, again, I haven't told her this yet, is leafy greens and restrict the sweets. So get her eating lots and lots of leafy greens, which the leafy greens usually includes the bitter greens, right? So that's a lot of liver focus right there. Then we notice that she also has contraction furrows. Remember, we saw these in our hematogenic eye, these things that look like wrinkles in the eye. So we want to remember that with these, with um, it suggests issues with burning through her B vitamins and vitamin C too fast that she may need more calcium and magnesium. But when I asked her, how do you handle stress and what does your body do? She specifically said that she puts it in her neck and her shoulders and she has a lot of neck and shoulder tension. So in order to handle that, oh, and insomnia. She often will have insomnia with that where she has problems falling asleep and the more stress she's under and the less well she sleeps, the more she's prone to diarrhea. So with her, I suggested eating more leafy greens, eliminating the refined carbs. I also suggested because she's got those dark brown spots in her eyes that she might be do better with the methylated Bs, vitamin C, calcium, and magnesium. Now, if she can actually get her leafy greens high enough, we may not need to add the methylated bees to her because your leafy greens contain the methylated bees already. Then looking at her right eye. So remember, these are as if we're looking at her, her, so her nose is right here. This is her right eye, this is her left eye. We see right here in the leg region it's a little bit darker. The fibers are a little bit spread apart. Can you see that? Can you see how this is a little less dense and a little darker than everything that's around it? This is actually the leg reaction field for her right leg. Notice how the contraction furrows come up to that rarefaction and they stop there. This all suggests that she is more prone to some kind of a nerve issue with that right leg. And when we dig a little deeper, the right leg, her right leg is the one that is significantly more affected with the restless leg syndrome. If one leg is going to act up first, it's going to be the right leg. The right leg will act up more intensely. Rarely does her left leg ever act up. So, Restless leg syndrome, we've connected it already with these eyes to her nervous system, that there's a nervous something going on and restless leg syndrome would fit. 
But restless leg syndrome has a really high correlation also to low ferritin, which is low iron stores. So we maybe need to monitor her iron intake, make sure that not only a dietary source of iron with all the leafy greens and egg yolk and some maybe some red meat, things like that, but we probably also need to add a herbal iron formula and the Nature Sunshine IX formula is a brilliant one to do this with. I often like to use the herbal blends rather than a concentrated tablet like an iron tablet because with the food source, the body will take what it needs and will let the rest pass through. When it's a concentrated tablet, the body often feels obligated or forced to absorb all of it and too much iron can be as much of a problem as not enough iron. We also needed to talk about nervine herbs and building the omega-3 for her. Restless leg syndrome being a neurological problem also often does well with some other forms of neurological stimulation. So things like um, she will often wear a compression sleeve on that calf and finds that the compression will often stimulate the nerve endings enough that they don't need to do the restless leg thing. We'll often have her um, liberally cover that, that right lower leg with Typhoo massage lotion. And what we know about Typhoo is it needs air to actually do its thing. So when she puts that on, she needs to leave that leg exposed to air for a few minutes before she tucks it back under the sheet in order to get those oils really stimulating the area and calming the leg down. Um, again, we've only just touched the tip of the iceberg with everything that's in this, this uh, woman's eyes. There's so much more to work with. So there's a lot more to to cover and of course that means that there's also a course to help with it right and that would be confident nutritionist dynamic iridology and question here is liver and gallbladder always separate issues since so closely connected in function um if the liver is an issue the gallbladder will often follow as an issue although the gallbladder can be its own issue because the gallbladder is where we store bitterness anger and resentment the formation of gallstones actually has nothing to do with liver function. It has to do with emotions that are eating away at the lining of the gallbladder. So they can be linked, but they're not always linked. And it just really depends on that individual, their family history, their personal history. That's a great question to ask, though, um, Stephanie. So thank you for asking that. Confident nutritionist, dynamic iridology. Oops. I'm working off two screens, one for notes and one to teach from. There we go. Starts on Wednesday, October 17th. And it, um, choice of two times. Early registration is on right now. It's been open for about a week and a half. And it ends tomorrow at 8 p.m. Mountain Daylight Time. So just as a point of reference, if you're not in the Mountain Time Zone, we started today at 10 a.m mountain daylight time so you can figure out the time zone difference if you want to get in on this certainly you could get registered for this today and not worry about the deadline tomorrow there will be more information coming out on that as we proceed through our workshop this morning the big picture for what you're going to learn you'll increase your confidence by doing this program by learning how to create programs right in your sessions and eliminate your unpaid homework time you've actually seen a little bit of that as we've worked through these first two case studies of there's the eye sign, these are the questions we ask, this is how we correlate it with what the client has asked for help with, here are the suggestions we're going to consider, but here are the suggestions for making a solid suggestions. We do that right in the appointment so there's no more homework time for you. How to do a base assessment in five minutes or less without lengthy intake paperwork. Well, even the amount of time it's taking us to do a slightly more in-depth in assessment than a, a, just a base assessment, you're seeing how quick it is and how little paperwork there is involved. Are you seeing how when we know how to assess the eyes for the different iris signs, we are only asking questions that correlate to what the client is concerned about, what the client's needs are, and things that we know are genetic predispositions that will feed into or be the base of the client's issues. 
You learn how to prioritize the problems your client needs help with. So important when we do this that, that we address it from two points of view. The first is we always have to do something that addresses the client's immediate problem, right? They need to know they've been heard and that we're working on it. But we also need to do something that gets to the root of the problem. So we work symptom for comfort and root for long-term correction. And by combining those two perspectives, we get compliance because the client sees results and we get better results faster because the client complied. With iridology, you learn how to connect what you know about nutrition and or herbology with what you discover using dynamic iridology. You've seen that already, right? How as I ask you, what would you suggest? What diet would you suggest? What lifestyle things would you suggest? What questions would you ask? You're looking at what you already know and seeing how to tie it in. And you also then learn how to do a deeper assessment for more direction and understanding of your client's needs when it's needed. In the actual iridology course, we teach beginning to intermediate iridology and sclerology at a level that will prepare you for the IPA certification exam if you so choose. Now, IPA does charge an additional fee for the exam and you get to pay that by yourself, but I will prepare you for the exam. You, and we will tie in your basic nutrition and your basic herbology as they relate to iridology so that you can really use what you know. How many times have you studied another modality and were not taught how to integrate it and so you just don't use that modality? Yeah, and it, it's not useful to do that, is it? It's not helpful. It's an investment in money. It's good to have the knowledge, but if you're not using it, it's not being helpful. So we want to make sure that we, as we learn, we, we don't only learn iridology, but we learn how to integrate with what you already know. Another case study, this is a female age 45. She's fit and trim. She's actually, actually a personal trainer. She has a long standing history of depression and anxiety, and she is on antidepressants and anti-anxiety medication. So a couple of different meds. Now you already know from things that we've talked about already that when we see these kinds of brown, orange rust patches in the eye, we want to start asking about her liver. The liver is where we store anger, bitterness, and resentment. So we don't want to limit ourselves to asking just about that digestion, although we need to ask that as well. But we want to go to that emotional level because what we know about the body is the physical body will only heal as far as the emotional body is healed, right? If there is an emotional something getting in the way of progress, we can't take the physical body beyond that. So we need to ask about anger, bitterness, resentment. And she has a little bit of that. Her life hasn't been perfect. And there's been some things that she's found it really hard to, to work through and get on with. Again, she's done nothing to put these spots in her eyes. These are genetic. So her genetic predisposition was to be a little more prone to holding on to anger, bitterness, and resentment, which means that we need to teach her skills to help her let go of it. So I use emotional freedom technique. I use flower essences. I use aromatherapy. You can use prayer, meditation, counseling, emotion code, all those kinds of things, whatever you've got under your belt or whoever you can refer out to to help with that side of things. The, these spots in her eyes will suggest that she holds a bit of a grudge and that she finds it a little harder to forgive. Okay, and she's a sweet, lovely person. She's not mean and nasty by any stretch of the imagination. And she'll joke about, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm over it. But if you give her time to think about it, you can see the emotion rising. And so we know that it still is there for her. So uh, you know that here we're going to ask about liver. And you already know, too, that where we're going for our short list of recommendations, right, he, uh, that leafy greens are really important here. They are liver food. The beets, as was suggested earlier, brilliant things. Even leeks are great for the liver. 
I love to also use the essential oils of helichrysum and lemon and have her dilute those just by a little bit in the palm of her hand. I call it the drop, uh, the dump, drop, and uh, rub method. So you put a little carrier oil in the hand, one drop of the essential oil, and then just massage that into the abdomen. And helichrysum and lemon are great for the liver, great for helping it to release toxins, great for helping to, emotion, to release emotional toxins as well. Then we needed to look at, and I just need to see my screen. Okay, that's, yeah, they're real. Look at this ring coming around here. This is called the collarette. When the collarette has points on it like this, we call this a jagged collarette, and we can see in her left iris, we have the same jagged stuff going on there. When we have a jagged collarette, it teaches us about temperament. So, I want you to think of comic strips. Maybe you still read the comics or maybe you did when you were little and they have a kaboom sign, you know, that big jagged thing and it was energy, it was power or it was kapow and it was somebody hitting something. Um, and it was an explosion of energy, usually not a positive energy. You never went love or happy with a jagged sign, right? Those were always done in a harder and a softer shape. So this jagged Colorette suggests that she's a little bit prone to be having a teeny bit of a temper, but because of the way these points are, when they go out and come back very sharply, that's a quick explosion, quick retraction. And so she tends to explode just a little and then retract and kind of, oops, sorry, didn't mean to do that. But she's still dealing with the issues under the surface. Um, the jagged collarette also teaches us about the intestinal tract, the large intestine and the small intestine. Now, this client's history, not only is it depression and anxiety, but it's also irritable bowel syndrome. She's got a real history of that, and that is the one thing that really messes up her life. So we need to ask her then, how does her mood affect her bowel? Has she noticed any link? between stress and tension and her bowel. So if you saw, if you knew someone had this kind of a temperament, that explosion of retraction, or that she, and that she was prone to IBS, what kind of questions would you ask her? Let's have you type those in. And at the same time, what kind of suggestions would you make? When we see this collarette that does this in, out, in, out, in, out thing, it's a strong suggestion that her intestinal tract tends to be a little spastic, that it's a little prone to cramping. So what kinds of questions would you want to ask and what kinds of recommendations would you want to make? Are you prone to diarrhea or constipation? Good questions, Hector. Good question. And you know, she would answer, yeah, it really depends on my mood. Triggering issues need to be addressed. Yeah. What are the things that set you off? Good question. Emotional upset creates symptoms? Absolutely. And Stephanie, we could take that one level deeper and what kinds of emotional upsets create symptoms? right? Because it could be dependent on the specific type as well. So excellent. Well done. Well done. And so um, initially, get my notes to progress here. There we go. Things to consider are the Nervine herbs, the B vitamins, vitamin D, lots of research on that now as an antidepressant. It's almost more of a hormone than it is a vitamin, right? Do you remember that like 15 years ago, 400 I use of vitamin D was recommended as the toxic upper limit. If you did more than that, you're going to kill yourself. It was bad, bad, bad. Now they're recommending 4,000 to 5,000. Depending on what clinic you go to, they may recommend one hit of 100,000 and then drop it down to 4,000 for maintenance. It's like, oh my goodness, right? And taking care of the bowels. So these are things that are on my list. Client hasn't seen this yet. 
right? And as we work with this then, and we work with her emotions to figure out what triggers her, and then we're going to work to find out, uh, to build her nervous system, to build her resiliency so she can handle the stress and the upsets of life a little better. And we're going to maybe work with some bowel support as well. So when we look at iridology, uh, I'm just gonna show you that even with very limited equipment, you could, could do an awful lot of good, even with just your basic little handheld device, right? You can do so much good. So if this client is a female age 20, she's got multiple food issues, everything from foods she doesn't like to foods that upset her gut to foods that have a texture that she won't eat to menstrual pain. So she's got a couple of key things going on. With her eye, even from, with just my little hand magnifier, here's what we would see. We would see that she's got a blue iris. That instantly tells us that she's prone to being over acid in her system and she needs to regulate her foods very carefully to monitor that. We would see that she has lots of these leaf or petal shaped markings in her eyes. So these tell us, depending on where they're placed, that she's prone to specific hormone imbalances. The most common ones are pancreas, thyroid, and adrenal. And so from there, we know then that she's probably likely prone to blood sugar imbalances and reproductive hormone imbalances because of the thyroid and the adrenals, and that she's maybe prone to stressing a little bit. We also see that she's got this different color hanging on right here around her pupil. And what we see with that is that, or what we understand with that is that it alters how her body digests food, especially protein, that she may not be able to digest it very well at all. When we see that she's got this bit of a gray edge, it suggests that her nutrient assimilation may not be great. And when we see that it looks like someone took teensy weensy scissors and cut little snippets into the edge of her eye, it suggests that her protein digestion may be genetically not the strongest. So when we see all of that, we know that she likely doesn't digest her foods well. And you know that when foods aren't digested well, they create acid reactions in the bloodstream. And that leads to a predisposition of inflammation, which the blue eyed person is very prone to. Well, with knowing that much about her, how much good can you already do for her with suggesting diet modifications and digestive support? As we look at the white of her eye, we see a couple of really key markings. We see this one that is pointing towards the bronchioles and the thyroid and the throat. So we're really going to be wondering about how her bronchioles are doing. Does she get a sore throat easily? And how is her thyroid? You know, when I see this, I want to ask her to go to her medical doctor and get her TSH, T3, T4, and reverse T3 tested. Reverse T3, some doctors will do and some won't. They have a funny attitude about that one. But I want to know those things because that will teach me if the thyroid is currently out of balance, as the sclera suggests it may be. I can also come over here to the 15-minute mark, and what we see is, whoops, I did not mean to do that. What we see again is a predisposition to a little bit more in the heart and lung region. And this, I'm gonna target lungs here, especially since what we see is there is a rarefaction in her lungs. So this is what she was blessed with genetically. This is what her body is doing dynamically. So we know that there is likely a bit of a stress happening in the lungs. The lungs were genetically a little bit weak, but we need to be supporting them actively now. So with that, again, we want to, we've got all that information, we've seen it all, we want to take a step back and decide where would I start. Well, with this person, the very first place I would start is with the gut. We would talk a little bit about food choices, but I would absolutely give this person both a protein digestive aid, which in the U.S. Nature Sunshine is PDA, and I would give a general enzyme, and I love what's called garden enzyme. In the States, it's called Peroxime Plus. 
I would just give her those two things and a couple of diet recommendations and let her go for a month and while she's getting some blood work done and see how she how she does with that. So I haven't overwhelmed her, but I've laid a strong foundation. So again, the uh, Confident Nutritionist Dynamic Iridology registration is open. Early bird registration is on now. And it's on at confidentnutritionist.com. So why would you want to study with me? Well, I've been where you are. I understand the financial and time constraints of running a business, taking care of a family, home, friends, and other important commitments. Remember, I started my business when we were starting our family. And I've grown my business and taken my courses and done my certifications while having and raising seven children while managing my business and my home without a nanny, right? I get busy. Now that our baby is actually leaving home in two weeks, um, we're going to be empty nesters, but my parents and my husband's parents are aging and they need us more because we are the children who live closest to them. So I get busy. I understand learning needs. We all don't learn in the same way. So question here is, do all signs have a physical and emotional component? Stephanie, absolutely. Absolutely. Every iris indicator and every symptom you see in the body has a physical and an emotional component. That is a component, rather. That is a great question. Thanks for asking it. You'd also want to study with me because I understand there's a lot to learn about iridology and sclerology, and it can be overwhelming. So I've got a lot of different pieces in place to support your learning. It's less expensive to study with a Canadian teacher who charges in Canadian dollars. I'll explain more about that in a few minutes. And I am committed personally to your learning. You're not going to get passed off to a learning aid or anybody else. You are mine when you sign up to take a course with me. This is what one of my students said, Chris Meyer. She is just getting ready to do her final exams. She said, making a genuine connection with people and how to guide them in a professional manner while staying within my scope of practice was the missing link that I desperately needed to advance my practice. When I learned the skills of iridology, I was able to give a deeper level of personalized suggestions based on what my on my client's own eyes. I discovered the simple fact that when you invest in a client on a more personal level, you don't become irrelevant, you become irreplaceable. I'm so grateful that one of Judith's webinars popped up in my suggested for you feed on YouTube. I had a head full of disorganized knowledge and she brought tremendous clarity along with a powerful assessment skill and experience and made her the perfect mentor to inspire and support me in moving forward. Confident nutritionist dynamic iridology could very well be a pivotal piece of the puzzle for you too. Like I said, she's finished her, her classwork and she is just getting ready to do her certification exam uh, work with me. And we'll explain that process in just a moment as well. This is Helen Murdoch. She has a Bachelor of Science in Nursing, a Master of Arts in Counseling, and I don't remember what the CA stands for. Just saying. I've been looking for a while for the right iridology course. I knew immediately when I saw Judas that this is it. Her inclusion of nutrition and herbs was definitely a winner. Judith's teaching style is most interactive as she engages us, the students, in lively discussions. Her Judith's knowledge base is so well-encompassing, we, the students, believe she knows everything. <laughs> My children used to believe that, too. <laughs> she operates like a coach with her use of motivational inquiry, just like we've done today, to help build our confidence as wellness professionals. The content of this course is so diverse and so much more than I had expected from an iridology course. I strongly recommend Confident Nutritionist Dynamic Iridology. Now, Helen is also just preparing to begin her iridology certification course. Oh, Hector, you're jumping the gun. I'm going to give you more information in just a moment about the details of the course. I promise I'm not going to leave you hanging. So it doesn't matter 
what color the iris is, you can always teach your client lots about their health when you understand iridology and sclerology. When you see an eye like this, you might think, where do I begin? Certainly this person has a creative streak and that predisposition towards hormonal imbalances of various kinds. There's also dark shading in these that tell us that these areas may need a little more support to keep them healthy and strong. There may be a predisposition with this to blood sugar imbalance, and so we need to ask those questions and look for where these marks are specifically placed to understand whether it's thyroid, reproductive, adrenal, or blood sugar. Notice how this is a little bit darker in here that teaches us about digestion and what needs support to help them digest more effectively. Now, they might already know. They might have figured that out through trial and error and through life. We would look in their sclera and notice various different kinds of markings that are in the sclera because the sclera tells us dynamically what's going on while the iris tells us genetically what their predispositions are. So what's included in the course? You get 20 sessions as live webinars. It's about 40 hours. Now, 20 sessions, so one a week, takes 20 weeks plus, you know, a break for Christmas and things like that. But each class is recorded in its entirety and posted to the student website. So if you have to miss a class, no big deal. Go back and listen to it in the recordings. All of the content is edited into short topic videos and also stored on your student site for you to review for 18 months. Now, the reason that's an 18 month limit is I like to keep the information really current. So at the end of 18 months, you are migrated from your student site to an alumni site that does have the current versions of everything on it. So you're always kept up to date. And this, this also helps that if there's only one little piece of the class that you wanna review or that you need clarification on, you can just look at that one little section video that's recorded there for you. There's a digital textbook on the student site that I've written and it's there for you to download. Cheat sheets are on the student site for downloading. So we've taken the entire curriculum removed all the pictures and put all of the content into a chart format so that it's really quick and easy to access. We took a 200 page textbook and condensed it down to less than 50 pages. Makes it real quick and easy once you know your markers. If you just need to understand one little thing or remember one little thing, you go to your cheat sheets and print them up. Most of my students love the cheat sheets. Every class starts with a review of the previous week. I need to know that you are rock solid on everything. So we start with a review and I always ask, are there any questions? And I sometimes questions go back three or four weeks or the first week, that's okay. We answer them and we make sure you are rock solid. Each week has lots of in-class practice and interaction. I allow at least a half an hour, almost sometimes a full hour for us to practice what we've learned for us to discuss it and to review it and to make sure it is solid for you. And the certificate of attendance for attending, 80% of the class is live. So that is fabulous. Now, if this was a face-to-face -face class, you would actually have the situation where you'd be practicing on other students, right? But because it's not, my students are spread out all over the world. I've got a student from Australia right now. I've got them from all over North America. I've had inquiries from Asia and from Europe as well, from England. And so all over the world, we can't look at each other's eyes. That is why I provide so many slides for us to look at and study as we go through. Now, this course is what I would call a premium course. There is a lot of high touch, lots of personal interaction with me in classes on the private student and alumni Facebook group and in our once a month office hours question periods where you can submit cases you're working on, photos if you can get them, and we discuss them as a group. This is not a correspondence course. This is a course where you do work on your own, but you come back to me online for live class instruction. I'm right here live. And, um, and we iron out the fine tuning of your training and make sure it's solid. This support, the support doesn't end even after you finished your coursework or even after you've certified. You're a part of my Facebook student and alumni group for as long as I'm teaching. 
you get ongoing support for as long as I'm active in this, which I foresee being a very long time. There are two packages to choose from. If you know right now you want training and you want certification, then you want the full meal deal. This is the tuition for the entire course with your ex IPA exam part one and IPA exam part two. The IPA exam is a three part course. And we'll talk a little bit more about these parts in just a moment. And so um, for those of you who don't live in Canada, who don't maybe buy things in Canadian dollars very often, what you need to know is the exchange rate is in your favor. 1995 Canadian converts to roughly 1495, $1,500 US. So when you register and you pay, PayPal, your credit card, they, it will take care of converting it automatically. So you will be charged the equivalent of 1995 in whatever your currency is, whether you're in the States or Australia. So Australian dollars are about a one-to-one. -one, and um, I don't remember what the, the, uh, the British sterling conversion is right off the top of my head. If you're thinking, I don't know if I want to certify but I really want the course, that's okay. You may not want to certify right now or you may not want to certify ever, then this other option too is for you. The course curriculum is $14.95. That's the same 20, 20 weeks of classes, the exact same content, but no exam prep. And it is $11.95. Whoops, 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 whoops. Okay, sorry, hitting all the wrong buttons and and you might look at these prices and you might think, well, I can go online and I can get an iridology course for $700 online. Why, why would I want to pay, let's say you're, it's usually in US dollars, why would I pay $1,500 US? Well, the $700 US course is typically four or five or six days of face-to-face -face training. So you've got four or five days away from your work. You've got an airline ticket to get there and back. You've got hotel and accommodation. You've got, um, what other expenses do you have? Ground transportation from airport to hotel to where the class is being held. You've got a lot of expenses. You might have childcare expenses back home because you're gone for so long. You also have the challenge of you're jamming a lot of information to four or five days. I don't know about you, but I don't learn very well that way. I like to learn a little bit, practice it, really get it solid, then learn a little bit more, practice it, get it solid. If I do a three or four day workshop, my brain shuts off after a day and a half. I take stop taking notes after two days and the rest of the time I'm just taking up space. You know, that's just how my brain works. I don't know if your brain works the same way. But by, by doing it online over 20 weeks, you have time to refine your skills and it comes out less expensive than doing a face-to-face -face course by a long shot. So it is time to get registered. Now, what if you like payment plans? You're thinking, I don't have that much in my back pocket, but I want the course. Four payments of $5.49, so one payment a month, wonderful. Spread it out, I love payment plans, really. It just makes it so you can afford to do more things, right? What if you only want the, cert the training, you don't want the certification just yet? Well, that's four payments of 419 Canadian a month. So again, spread it out, make it doable. But you know what? There's an early bird registration going on, right? If you know right now that you're ready to roll, that you want this, and you're ready to commit before tomorrow at 8 p.m., 1795 so you save 10% for 1345 again save 10%. So uh, again the details here this course is being offered and again Hector I don't know exactly where you are whether you're in North America or somewhere else if you're in North America it's offered on Wednesdays and you have a choice of two times. We're going to cover that in just a half a second. If you're interested in the payment plan, you're thinking, okay, $17.95, I'm committing, I'm in there, I want this, I totally want this, and you know that you want it, and you get in before the deadline uh, cut off tomorrow, four payments of $4.99, you're going to save yourself 10%, again, $200.
what if you want course but no certification right now for payments of 381.50 but remember this ends tomorrow at 8 p.m so when is it offered hector finally for you yes wednesdays it's on wednesdays if you're in north america we start the 17th of october it will end mid to late march depending on you know the christmas break and if there's a crisis comes up where i have to take a week off or something like that then of course we can't hold a class i try to avoid crises they aren't good they're fun 11 a.m to 1 p.m mountain daylight time you have a choice of two times or 5 p.m to 7 p.m mountain daylight time so there's your different time zones for when it would be in north america or in england now, remember, though, that daylight saving time changes different times around the world. So where I live, it ends on November 4th and it starts up again. I believe it's March 19th or March 10th, I think. And so um, that may change when your classes happen. So just to be aware of that, you might want to go into a, a time checker, put in a time for mid-November and just double check to make sure. So you've got a choice of two times and they're both taught live. And when I've got students in both classes, what happens is they both get recorded. Both of the recordings get uploaded to your student site and you have access to both recordings. Sometimes different information comes out, right? I'll think of a different story to tell or I'll think of a different, um, a different piece of information and I'll weave it in. And so you, if both sessions are running, as they usually do, you actually want to listen to both recordings because you never know what different little bit of information you're going to pick up. If you miss the early bird registration tomorrow and you're going to pay full tuition, which is fine. Some people choose to do that for whatever reason. Just know that registration cuts off on October 15th and it closes entirely. So how do you register? You go to confidentnutritionist.com. You click on whatever button meets, has the description you want, whether it is full course with exam prep, full course without exam prep. Or if you want for pay, scroll right to the bottom of the page and you'll see some text links that say, I'd rather make four payments and, and get the exams, or I'd rather make four payments than not get the exam prep. You pay your tuition, then check your email for the form. Let me know if you don't receive it within an hour of registering, and I'll personally send it to you. Print the form up. Complete the form and choose whether you want the morning section or the evening section. It's morning or evening where I live. In Australia, it's the next day, right? So just... Uh, whether you want what we are calling morning or evening, scan or take photos of all of the pages and email them back to me. And my email address is on the phone, as soon, or on the form rather. As soon as I receive those forms back, I will finish the manual side of your registration and will make sure that you are in the section you want. We will give you instant access or an invitation to the student and alumni Facebook group. You will be invited to the very next office hours session to see how they operate and to contribute what you want or ask questions. And you will be given access to the beginnings of your course. The actual course content is released on a weekly basis because I want you to be solid, super solid on information before the new stuff comes through. If your registration comes through on Sunday, just know I take Sundays off very faithfully and I will take care of your registration. I don't usually work Mondays, but I would come in to take care of your registration on a Monday because I love you so much. I really do. Exam certification. Let's talk about IFA exam. The IFA exam is a three-part exam. When we have finished our classwork and you're on the exam track or Maybe you thought you didn't want to do the exam part, but now you've changed your mind. I have an exam package as well that you can buy at a later time if you choose. Uh, I, I give you access to part one on the internet. 
there's a student file for part one, and it contains a whole selection of different iRIDES, sets of iRIDES. I ask you to do one analysis, and this isn't how we actually do them in real practice, but it's how IPA wants us to do them for evaluation. You do one iris analysis complete, and you will learn how to do that through the course. Send it to me. I will look over it, make sure that it's super solid. Let's find if there's any weak links and what your strengths are, then we'll meet and we'll talk about that. We'll have a private online meeting and I'll coach you through that. And then you choose 10 more and you complete those, send them all to me by snail mail. So I've got hard copies to write on. And then we have another private meeting where we go through and say, I noticed you did this well, you did this well, we need to be, con be paying more attention here. I love the way you did this and really make sure you're solid. When you've done those 10, then you're ready to move on to part two. Part two of the exam, IPA provides me with a case study, which I forward to you. You do the full analysis on that set of iRIDES and that case study. You again, snail mail it back to me, so I've got the hard copy to write on. Once I've marked it, then we meet again privately online to discuss it. Make sure you are solid. When you and I are both convinced that you are solid, and sometimes I give my students an extra case or two just to, to make sure they're there, then I let IPA know you are ready for the final exam. You fill out the paperwork, send in the paperwork and your exam fee. They send the exam and you do the exam and we wait on pins and needles for your results to come in. You do have to, the exam currently is seven sections. You do need to get 80% on each section to pass. Any section you do not get 80% on, you pay a rewrite fee and you rewrite just that section. You only pay the rewrite fee once, even if you have to rewrite the section three or four times, which never happens. I make sure it doesn't because I help you to be solid enough that we avoid it. My goal is that every one of my students passes the exam first time and actually passes with 90% on all the sections. Okay, that is the caliber of the training I offer my students and the support and mentoring I give them. So why would you want to be certified with or with IPA to have professional and recognized affiliation, to have opportunities to keep up to date on latest research, to add your energy to the movement, to have iridology world, recognized worldwide by healthcare systems, and it is recognized in some Asian countries, and to prove to your clients that you are up to date on the latest and best information. We've got one more case study to do. I'm going to blast through this pretty quick because I'm just about out of time. If you can stay with me to the end, great. If you need to leave at 1130 sharp, thank you for being with me. Um, so this is female, age 34, extreme anxiety, polycystic ovarian uh, syndrome, PCOS, and she has is on anti-anxiety meds. Now, polycystic ovarian syndrome usually means infertility. And it did for this client for many, many years, which meant her hormones were totally messed up. As practitioners, we know that if the reproductive hormones are out of balance, everything else suffers. Contraction furrows, which she has, also suggest nervous system imbalances. So she's got a couple of things, um, other markers too, that suggest that her blood sugars could be at risk and that she might be prone to pancreas imbalances, namely this and this. And so she's got a lot of things really pointing to PCOS. PCOS is a metabolic imbalance that includes insulin resistance and it often progresses to type two diabetes and it always results in unbalanced hormones. The end picture is fewer than nine menstrual periods per year and often fewer than six, but anything under nine renders the client infertile. Other symptoms include weight gain, inability to lose weight, male pattern baldness and hair growth, so thinning hair on the top of their head, facial hair, and also acne. So this client came to me with a long history of all of those problems. So as I looked at this, I had to, um, she, sorry, she gained 60 pounds in less than a year when this first hit. And 
when she learned she had PCOS and we talked about diet, she was motivated. She wanted a baby. So she buckled down more solidly than any client I've ever seen. And I gave her the full meal deal. I fire hosed her desperately badly in that first appointment because I thought she was motivated enough. So we cut out all of her refined carbs um, and we really got her working with lots of leafy greens and good proteins. Because of what I saw in her eye, eyes, the contraction for us especially, I asked her, how do you handle stress and what does stress do? What do you do? How does your body respond? And um, she talked about the anxiety getting so much worse. So we suggested lots of leafy greens for her to get rid of the refined carbs, get the methylated B vitamins. Now, PCOS has a strong link to MTHFR defect. MTHFR defect means they have to have their B vitamins that require methylation in the methylated form. They cannot methylate their Bs. So the leafy greens are great because they provide the methylated Bs, but we also gave her additional methylated Bs. Um, there's also been an interesting re research done that was published in 2017. 1,530, uh, sorry, 1,530 non-diabetic adults were showed to have an inverse relationship between folate and insulin resistance. So the lower the folate was, the higher the insulin resistance was. So we need to focus on those methylated Bs with these people. So these are some of the suggestions that I considered giving her. Notice we also have a somewhat jagged cholerate. So we had to ask, how's her temperament? Does she have moods that are really suddenly up and down? And the answer is absolutely yes, she does. And so uh, when I asked her that, then on my short list again, we had the Nervine herbs, the methylated Bs, the vitamin D, and taking care of the bowel because that jagged cholerate correlates to bowel function as well. So also worked with teaching her EFT, which she did not like. She did not like feeling the emotional intensity of that. So we had to let that go and just work with what we could. And she's made some great progress anyways. So what we ended up doing again, really intense diet work, cutting out the refined carbs and getting her methylated bees up, getting her leafy greens and her vegetable intake up. She lost the 60 pounds. She's become a personal trainer and she's gone on to have four babies, which is really, really cool with no medical support, no Clomid, anything like that. Do, uh, do brown spots could also show re recreational? Okay, so question from... Hector asking if the brown spots could be accumulated from drug use. No, Hector, that is a very old Jensenian perspective, calling those drug spots and saying they are accumulated. That is not a truth. It's been proven many times over that that kind of stuff does not accumulate in our eyes. You have no indication in the eye rides of recreational drug use. Depending on how those drugs affect the body, there may be different things show up in the sclera, but nothing like that shows up in the iris. Thank you for asking. Sclera starts showing improvement or worsening of the situation. Yes, the sclera is dynamic and it can show with enough work if things are moving in the right direction or not. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so the benefits for you of learning how to do this, no more unpaid homework time for you. You'll be able to cre create those therapeutic sequences to help your clients become more successful and keep them coming back to continue their wellness journey. So we've got two things. We've got more time. What would you do with more time? We've got clients coming back. So your appointment book is more full, which is an increase of income. You get rid of those lengthy intake questionnaires that nobody likes. And again, Hector says, how many Bs can be methylated? Uh, B12, B6, and there's at least one more that escapes me for the moment. I'm sorry. Yes. I, um, so anything that you can put a methyl, your L5, uh, your fo folic, folic acid, folate, which I believe is B9, is one that's critically has to be methylated. Uh, eliminate... Paperwork, create that rapport with your clients, right? So important. And you will be more precise in your client work. And who doesn't want that? And so here we are. It is time to get registered. 
you have the early bird option until 8 p.m. Mountain Daylight Time tomorrow. Whether you pay the full tuition all in one go or whether you do the four pay, those, those discounts disappear tomorrow night at 8 p.m. So I encourage you to get in there, get registered, and join me for the class. See how much fun it is. If you've learned a ton today, just think what 20 sessions with me would be like. Yeah. And with that, I say have a wonderful day. Thank you for your participation. I love that you've asked so many questions. Oh, Stephanie, one question. Does MTF, MTHFR show up in the eyes? There is some recent research that shows that brown spots in the eyes correlate to MTHFR. So that is still being proven, but there is some correlation beginning to show on that level, which is very exciting. So with that, thank you again. Thank you for staying with me the extra five minutes. I look forward to having you in class. Have a blessed day. Bye for now.